Good morning, Grade Fives. I hope you're well and rested and ready for a maths lesson. Uh, just a reminder that if you have any questions for me, you should email me on grade5 at worksheetcloud.com. You can find the email address on this page. Um, and for after the lesson, there is a link for the homework on this page as well. Uh, glad you could join us. Uh, remember, I can't hear you. So if you've got a question, I must email. Um, and then just also a reminder that during this lesson, it would be good for you to have a pencil and paper handy so that you can do some notes as we go along. Um, just uh, some sort of, I'll tell you when you, need to, when you need to use your paper and pencil. All right, so take a moment and quickly go get that. And I will start in just a moment with fractions. Right, while people are getting um, their pencil and paper, uh, we, well, I'm not making you do it as part of these lessons, but it is very beneficial uh, for all of you to know your times tables. And unfortunately, there's not somebody, something that you can magically just have put into your head. It's something that will only come with practice and you need to practice. So I would really suggest setting some time aside each day just to practice your times table it speeds all of your maths up. And particularly when you're doing your operations, uh, it allows you to work through very quickly and focus on the process uh, and not have to worry about those little steps in between. Um, and sometimes, in fact, very often, uh, children understand the process and they know what they're supposed to do and they get the wrong answer because of uh, a little working out error along the way and help you, knowing your times tables well uh, will help prevent that from happening. That and mental arithmetic, but we'll worry about that in another day. Okay, I hope that you all have pencil and paper. Uh, I know that some people in my classes in the past, when they've heard that we're doing fractions, they go, oh, fractions, I hate fractions. Um, and I think that actually that is not really a case of hating fractions. I think that's a case of um, a way of saying, actually, I don't yet feel confident in fractions. And with a little bit of work uh, and a little bit of understanding, uh, maybe they'll feel differently about fractions. And hopefully after today's lesson, we'll be on track to um, feeling a little bit more confident about fractions. Okay, so moving across to fractions and having a look, uh, we're gonna just start off quickly by um, looking at actually what are fractions and why we have to have them in the first place, uh, which I think is important. I think it's important that, uh, especially as, as growing and uh, learning students, it's important to know why we make you do these things. Why do we have these things and so on? All right, so there's a little bit of a, a recap of some grade four work here, uh, but I do think it's important each year and that's why you do things like fractions each year and you start off by recapping what you know and then you build on that. Um, so that's what we're going to do today. Uh, so first of all, just the lesson objectives. Uh, why do we have fractions um, and what are they? Uh, secondly, what the denominator is, what the numerator is, and finally, uh, understanding that a fraction is actually the same as a division problem. All right, okay, so a quick recap. Uh, this should be something you know, but not necessarily, uh, and if you don't, that's okay. You should know it from when we finished with today. Right, so the reason we have fractions um, is sometimes we need to share a unit. So you should be familiar with hundreds, tens, and units. That's all good, but what happens when we've only got one and then we need to share that one? We need to break up the one, the unit, or what we call the whole, just which is just another word for one unit, and we need to share that out into equal pieces. Now, quite importantly, these pieces have to be the same size. So if you think about if you have to share something, you can imagine if you were sharing, a, um, sharing out some Smarties with some friends and you made one pile have a lot of Smarties in and the other pile be smaller, uh, everyone will want to choose the big pile. So it's important that when we use a fraction, those pieces or those piles of Smarties need to be the same size. Uh, normally, um, when we look at pictures of fractions, we all of the pieces are the same shape as well, uh, as you'll see. It's generally quite easy to see. Okay, so 
the number of pieces we break up our unit or our whole into is what becomes the denominator, which is the word, which, which is the number at the bottom. It's a special name. You do need to know it. Denominator, it means the number at the bottom. So in this fraction, we've got, I haven't put a numerator in, but in this fraction, we have one that's broken up into 18 pieces. So I think quite a few chocolate slabs are broken up into 18 pieces. Uh, so if we had one, we'd have one over the top and 18 at the bottom. That's how many pieces we break up the hole into. Um, and if you ever get confused about which is at the top and which is at the bottom, these two big words, you know, I always remember that D is for down, and that's why the denominator is at the bottom. Okay, this is a recap of some grade four knowledge. Uh, remembering that the denominator is the bottom, I'd like us to write down the denominator for each of these. So this is where you're going to use your uh, pencil and paper that you've got. I'm going to jump across to a whiteboard flat platform quickly so I can show you an example of what I'm expecting for your answer. So let me just escape from this, jump across to my whiteboard um, where I can draw. So I'm just going to switch over to my iPad so I can draw at the same time. All right, let's do number three as an example. I will pick yellow for my color I'm drawing with right now. So what I'm going to do is have a look at number three. I'm going to count how many pieces I have. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. I have eight pieces, and that means that my denominator will be eight. So there you can see there are nine problems for you to quickly um, go through. I'm not looking for a numerator, just the denominator. So for each of those nine, please would you put just the denominator with the line above it. Hope number nine doesn't catch you out. I'll give you about a minute and a half for that. Just move my picture out of the way. Right, you have about another 30 seconds to quickly finish those off. Excuse me. All right, I hope you're all done, but if not, uh, don't stress, this is not a test, this is just about learning. So let's have a look at number one. We can see that there are two pieces, so our denominator will be two. If we look at number two, there are one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten pieces, so our denominator is ten. If we look at number four, we have one, two, three, four, five, six, so our denominator is six. One, two, three, four, five. So our denominator is five. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve. Denominator is twelve. One, two, three, four. Denominator of four. One, two, three. Denominator is three. And I hope number nine didn't catch you out. We just have one, so the denominator is one. All right, good. Um, if we wanted to have a look at the numerator, uh, the numerator, we're then looking at how many are actually colored in. 
so in the first case, there are two pieces, but both of them are colored in. So the numerator is two. Uh, in number two, there are 10 pieces. We have all of them. Over there, we've got eight. So it's eight on top. It's numerator of six, numerator of five, numerator of 12, four, three, and one. Now, if we have a look at this, we can see that all four are there, and this is one whole. And you would also notice that four divided by four is equal to one. So you can see that this, where the numerator and the denominator are the same, uh, is one whole. Um, anyway, we'll come to equivalent fractions tomorrow, and we'll come a little bit more to what the, or how division and um, multiplication, sorry, division and fractions are the same thing a little bit later on in the lesson. All right, let's jump back to our presentation and continue. All right, so the numerator is how many pieces of that whole we actually have. Uh, very often in a picture, um, it's asking how many are colored in, or sometimes it actually asks how many are not colored in. So for this one, we could say how many are colored orange, and we can see there's one colored in, that's our numerator. There are four pieces altogether, that's our denominator. If we had instead said how many of them are colored in green, then we would say, well, they're four altogether but three of them are colored in green, and so our numerator would have been three. So it just depends on how the question is asked. All right, another quick test of your grade four knowledge. Uh, so again, we're gonna do this on um, paper and notepad. Um, I'm gonna jump across to the other platform and, and just have a look at it. Uh, but let's think of these as one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, and 11. I'd like you to write down the fraction that is shaded in green. All right, so how many of them are shaded in green? So write down the fraction with the numerator and the denominator. I'll give you a couple of minutes for that, maybe three minutes from now. So just to remind you, to find the denominator, we look at how many pieces the circle has in total. So one, two, three, four, that's to find the denominator. To find the numerator, we ask ourselves how many are actually colored in, how many are shaded. And just a reminder, we're going across, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven. Got just about a minute left to finish those off. I'm sure some people have finished, but it isn't a race. In maths, it's always more important to get the right answer than to get finished with your work. So I would rather you didn't manage to finish them all, but got the ones you did right, than rush through, got them all finished, but they weren't all right. Accuracy is more important than speed in maths. Right, 10 seconds left. 
In the meantime, I'm going to switch across to the whiteboard app so I can draw. Just going to move across. So you can see. All right. Let's have a look at the first one. Well, to find our denominator, I'm just going to do them on the side next to them. To find our denominator, we look at how many pieces there were all together. One, two. Here we go. If we look at how many I actually shaded in, well, that's one. So it's one over two. Looking at our second one, we can see we have one, two, three. So three is our denominator. One is colored in. So we've got a one. Looking at the next one, four is the denominator because we have four pieces in the circle. One is green, so we have one. Next one, we have five pieces all together, one at the top. You can notice a pattern developing, I'm sure. And in fact, one of the things I like about maths is that I'm always looking for patterns. And when, when your mind starts getting switched on to numbers, you'll start to see patterns all over the show. Right, in the next one, we have one, two, three, four, five, six pieces. So a denominator of six, one is colored in. So our numerator is one. Over here, we have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. So our denominator is seven. We have a numerator of one. For the next one, I hope you got eight, one colored in. You will notice that for each of these ones that we're busy with, uh, our numerator is one. And that's because in each of these pictures, only one of them is colored in. Right. Next one, we have nine pieces. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. One is colored in. Ten. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven. And finally, twelve. All right, that wasn't particularly challenging because they're all having a numerator of one. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to erase the markings that I've done over here. And I'm going to then color in some more. And I'm going to ask you to redo the last uh, seven. All right, so you can do them as I color in. I'll tell you when I'm done with each one. Switch over to green. The pieces don't need to be next to each other. If you think about if you were eating a pizza, you might choose the ones that have nice toppings on and leave the empty ones for last. Or if you're like me, maybe you will eat the ones with the least toppings first and save the best ones for last. So it might not be that they're all next to each other. All right, so in the first one, there we go. Write the fraction for that. Write the fraction for that one. For that one. That one. That one. And that one. I'll give you about a minute. Now that you've got the hang of it, you shouldn't need quite as long. We've got about half a minute left. Remember to find the denominator, you ask how many pieces there are all together. And to find the numerator, you ask how many of those pieces are colored in or shaded, or how many pieces you have. All right, good. 
Uh, I'm going to switch over to blue quickly and draw. So the denominators are not going to stay the same. Still 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12. And that's because I didn't change how many pieces the circles were broken up into. The only thing that did change was how many we had or how many were shaded. So in the first, in this one over here on the left, you can see we had one, two, three shaded. So we've got three. Over here, they were all shaded. So that's seven over seven. One, two, three, four, five, six. We've got six over eight. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. Sorry, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Uh, if you were being a little bit smart, you might have said, well, we have nine, only one of them is not colored in, and so we can just work out that nine minus one is eight, and you could have got that. That is a terrible drawing of an eight. I'm going to try again. Okay, moving to the next one, you can see there are one, two, three, four colored in. In the next one, we have one, two, three, four, five colored in, five over 11, and four over 12. All right, I know that some of you may recognize uh, that there's some fractions that could be written differently. We talk about equivalent fractions, and that's one of the things that we'll be covering in tomorrow's lesson. All right, let's jump back into our slide presentation. All right. So let's have a look at this slab of chocolate. Right now, I feel like some chocolate, but it's a little bit early in the morning to be having chocolate. All right, so I want you to imagine that you want to share this slab of chocolate with eight friends. So you and eight friends, that means there's nine people in total. How much would each of you get? Well, luckily with this piece of chocolate, there are nine blocks, so it's gonna be pretty easy to break it up. Uh, and that means that each person would get one piece. And so how would you express that as a fraction? Well, each person gets one out of nine. So they get one ninth of the slab. In other words, drop my picture a little bit. So um, that um, would be the same as saying we're dividing the chocolate between nine people. All right, so you can see that one divided by nine, one slab of chocolate divided by nine people, and each person gets one ninth. And the, the really important thing that I want to see, want you to see from this is, is the fact that a fraction is actually just a different way of writing a division problem. All right, so please bear, bear that in mind. It's just a different way of writing it. So one divided by nine means the same thing as one over nine. Okay, a couple more things through it. I don't know why I thought of eggs for this lesson, but eggs it shall be. So I want to know what fraction of eggs in this box are white. Not the pale ones, but um, just the white ones altogether. So I would say that it's only this one over here. So see if you can say what fraction of the eggs in this box is white. I hope that you got one over 10, because one of them is white and there are 10 altogether. So one tenth is white. If I'd asked you differently, what fraction of these eggs is not white? Well, then we'd say there's still 10, so denominator of 10, and there are nine that are not white. So the fraction of eggs that's not white is nine over 10. Staying with eggs, what fraction of these eggs is not broken? Well, one of them is broken, but we're looking at how many are not broken. So there are five that are not broken. There are six altogether. So five over six or five sixths. Looking at three questions to do with this one. Firstly, uh, what fraction of these eggs are dark brown? Secondly, what fraction of these eggs are white? And thirdly, what fraction of these eggs are light brown? So I'm going to jump out of this picture. I hope that you've got those fractions. So um, we've got dark brown, we've got white, and we've got light brown. 
I'm going to jump back to my board quickly. I'm going to move across a little bit over here, my iPad. Move across a little bit so we're in the same place. All right, there we are. Okay, so we looked at dark brown. We looked at light brown. And we looked at white. All right, I hope my memory serves. Um, actually, let me quickly jump back and have a look. So we had four that were dark brown. So there were four uh, out of the 12. We had three that were light brown and five that were white. So three of the 12 were light brown and five of the 12 were white. All right, so if I'd asked you uh, to organize these fractions from smallest to biggest, we can still see them. Uh, and this is a prelude to tomorrow's lesson, something that we're going to look at with equivalent fractions. If I'd asked you to put these in order from smallest to biggest, we would say, okay, well, we can see our denominators are all the same. It's sort of like asking which has the least and then up to which has the most. All right, so we would then say, well, 3 over 12 is the smallest. Next smallest is 4 over 12. And the biggest is 5 over 12. So in this case, we would have organized these fractions from smallest to biggest. From smallest to biggest. All right. Uh, just something that's sort of leading on to tomorrow's lesson. Not something that we need to be worried about at the moment, but just for those bright sparks, I thought I'd let you know what's coming. All right, and finally we have, I think, just one more slide before we finish up for today. All right, I made it a little bit more complicated because there's more to look at. I'd like to ask you, what fraction of these eggs are gold? Well, I get that there are 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13 altogether. 2 are gold, so the fraction you were looking, of, looking for was 2 over 13 or 2 thirteenths. All right, that's where we finish up for today, um, Grade Fives. It's been loving, lovely having you with me today. Um, please remember that if you have any questions uh, about fractions or you'd like to ask any questions just about maths generally, um, or if there's something you want to cover in a future lesson, um, please email me on grade5 at worksheetcloud.com. I think you can find the link on this page to email. Um, you can also find the homework for today, which shouldn't take you too long, which is also on this page. And please stay safe. And I look very, very much forward to seeing you for tomorrow's lesson. Have a fantastic day. Goodbye, grade5s.